these conversations on diversity, equity, and inclusion. So we're, uh, we're in a really interesting time. We're doing some things differently. Uh, hopefully you'll recognize how, uh, how life has changed. And so we're taking this opportunity to bring what we typically do in, in a classroom setting and in a group setting to, to bring it to you online. So make it available to you 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Now, I know some of you are uh, engaged in your uh, PlayStation games, your Xbox, you know, 1000s and, you know, at some point though, you're gonna get bored with that. And hopefully you'll turn to us to help eradicate uh, ignorance. So we all know that ignorance is a disease that can be cured through through knowledge and uh, and conversations. And so one of the things we want to talk about uh, today is really talk about this idea about being too woke, right? So is it possible that someone can be so woke that they actually can't have communications or build or, or actually alienate their allies? And so, um, so I want you to ponder that question. If you can, you know, put some stuff uh, uh, in the chat room about uh, a, a time when you've noticed that, um, and, and I'll share a couple of examples that uh, that that I, I, I've seen. So, I was working with uh, with some folks, and they were uh, again. I will. Um, make sure that the, uh, the the guilty are not identified in any of my stories so if it's you don't be nervous i'm not going to i'm not going to out you right but um, so a supervisor overheard a conversation it was a casual conversation just people talking about random stuff and the supervisor was like you know what i can't I have to speak up against this i have to say something about this and so the supervisor goes over and he says Guys, you really should watch your language and, and how you're talking about stuff. And let's just say, for example, they were talking about popcorn, right? Let's say it was popcorn. And, uh, and the supervisor says, you know, there are people who, you know, that we need to be sensitive to those people who don't eat popcorn. We, we need to be sensitive to, to what's going on with them. Now, I'm not talking about something that is, uh, that people are allergic to. I'm not talking, this is like their preference, right? So, so or, or um, just talking about popcorn, they could, those people who are allergic could break out in hives. And, um, and so the supervisor and, the, and, the, and the, the, the people were a bit taken aback because the supervisor came out of nowhere. So supervisor wasn't even in the conversation. Um, I think Cory Booker said he, they were dipping in the Kool-Aid and did not even have a spoon. And I think he said it just like that. Um, so, so the supervisor was, um, was overhearing this, interjected himself into this conversation, and, you know, was woke, down for the cause. Um, and I have to say, I appreciate the supervisor for having the awareness that this could be problematic, right? But given a, a, a different context, a different way of thinking about things, it could have been problematic. Um, and so the people are, are, are interjecting with, I mean, they're talking with the supervisor and they're like, what are you talking about? Like, what? I mean, it's just popcorn. Like, and the supervisor's like, yeah, but, you know, we need to be sensitive because some people, da 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 so, so I sit down with the supervisor and, and the supervisor says, well, it didn't go so well, Andre. Like the, the whole conversation just did not, it didn't go how I, I, how I thought it would. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, I now have animosity on my team because people don't want to talk about things because I said, you're too woke. You're too woke. So this is what I've learned. I've learned, I, I've learned this the hard way and you know, through the help of my pastor, through you know, um, teaching middle school, all sorts of stuff, I've come to this this understanding, and uh, and oftentimes my pastor will talk about this in 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 his lessons that it's important to make a distinction between instances of something and a pattern. It's important to make the distinction between, between an instance of a thing and a pattern of a thing. So, um, there's lots of injustice in the world. There, there, there just is. Human beings are human beings. You know, we don't, you know, people hoard toilet paper. I, I don't know why, but, but they, they, they hoard to toilet paper. People are, people are people. 
And so any set of human behaviors should not be a surprise. You should not be surprised when you see any combination of human behaviors. So when I'm, when I'm in the mall and, and, and someone makes a, um, makes a derogatory comment, what do you do about that, right? Do you break out a PowerPoint presentation and say, you know what, I was at this session with Andre, he did this thing, and what you're doing is not helpful. Is that one, is that a, a it certainly is an approach. It is an approach. I don't know that you would change anyone's mind with that approach. Um, and so, uh, so, so Andre, are there things that are so egregious that you have to step in and do something? There certainly are. But recognize in doing that, stepping into those things, you're actually not trying to build relationships, right? So you're not trying to build relationships. You are trying to snatch someone out of a dangerous situation, um, hopefully with their permission or, or you see something that is so egregious that you have to step in, but you're not, don't expect a relationship. Don't expect that. Thank you. Don't expect, you know, I really appreciate you telling me about myself in that situation, right? So don't expect that. Um, so yeah, there are those situations, but most often we find ourselves in relational, um, contexts where the relationship does matter. So I have to work with these people over a period of time. I have to be around these people for, for an extended period of time. I've got to engage with these people for an extended period of time. So how does your wokeness serve you? D does it allow you to engage people in a way that makes them want to, to move on with you? And so I said earlier that, that it's important to know the distinctions between a pattern of behavior and an instance of behavior. Because what I've learned, particularly in middle school, is that I don't address instances unless they're egregious, right? But, but, but typically I don't in, a, a, a address instances of behavior because I'd be doing that all day. I'm, I'm in the supermarket, I'm in, the, in, the, in commerce, I'm in the, 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 the office, and I hear stuff all the time. And if I addressed everything that I heard, I would be more tired than I am right now, right? So, so instances. However, as a leader in my organization, a leader in my family, a leader in the community, when I see systems, patterns of these behaviors, I address those. So, so I've recognized, you know, uh, Mr. Coworker or, or Ms. Coworker, that you've used this kind of language repeatedly, and I just want to suggest to you that you may want to think about doing that differently because I've seen a pattern of, of, of behaviors. And so sometimes we can be so woke that we, we jump on every little thing. And, and so people who do want to learn, people who do want to do better, don't want to do better with us. They'd rather do better without us. I can't stand that person because they are blah, 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 blah. They are so woke. They are so uh, aware of, you know, the things that I'm doing wrong that they don't even see the log that's in their eye. Is it possible that, that our wokeness is actually manifesting the same kinds of things that we accuse other people of? So Andre, what are you suggesting about being woke? Suggesting about how we interact with folks. What I would suggest is approach people with humility. That even in those, those instances, that we approach them with humility and grace that we extend to them undeservingly what we want from them, that we give what we want from them, that we give it to them, even when they don't act like, look like, they deserve it. Because many of us were in that same situation at some point in our lives, that we did not deserve the grace and the kindness that people gave us uh, and some of us didn't even get it. We didn't get that kindness and we didn't get that graciousness that, uh, that other people are afforded. And so when we think about um, how, do, how do we be an effective ally? How do we be an effective advocate? Now, this is one thing I do want to say. So people will say, well, I am a, um, I'm an ally for this, that, or the other thing. 
That's cool. I appreciate you saying that. Um, I, I think the sentiment is a good one. But here's my question. Who else calls you an ally? If you're the only person calling you an ally, you're questionable. Example, Dr. Dre, right? So, so um, you know, uh, NWA, the Chronic album, you know, found Eminem, did that, that Dr. Dre, right? So Dr. Dre comes, uh, you're in the hospital, you have some kind of ailment or you're going in for a procedure, and Dr. Dre walks into the operating room. He walks into the operating room. Uh, some people might get excited and be like, oh, can I get your autograph? You know, but, but, but other folks are, are a bit concerned. And why might they be concerned? Because he is not a medical doctor. What is he doing in, in the operating room? But he calls himself a doctor. Oh. So if you're an ally and nobody else calls you an ally, Are you an ally? I was uh, I was doing a session at a school, and I, um, you know, I, I I'm evolving, right? I'm I'm growing, I'm learning, I'm trying to be a better human every day, and um, and the, 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 this person watched my presentation. They came up to me after the presentation, and they said, you know what? They said to me, you know what? Your your presentation was full of things about othering. Um, you weren't um, you weren't you know, you didn't use this language right, and you didn't do this right, and, 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 and all this kind of stuff. And I, 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 I was feeling bad about that. And my first inclination was to address the, 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 the statement, because I don't want, it. so one of my fears, and I'll just be transparent, is for people to misunderstand my communication. Like, like that's one of my things. I don't want to be misunderstood because I'm trying to do my best. I don't want, I want to be understood, right? And so my, my first inclination was to address that person's, the, 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 that person's um, feedback point by point, right? And I was like, you know, in, in, in my head, I, I do this, I'm like this, and da, da, da. And then I thought about it. And this is what I said to the person. I said, watch my life. Watch my life. Watch my life. So, so I may not get it right all the time, and I may not be 100% uh, perfect, but, but over time, if you watch what I do, what I say has a better context. Has a better context. Yeah, give that grace and mercy. Give me, be humble enough to recognize that people had some good intentions. And I know that the road to hell is paved with good intentions, but I will tell you that you cannot get people to move to, to, to the, 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 little, the littlest amount if we're always browbeating them with how imperfect they are because we are also imperfect. We're imperfect. And so what I would encourage you to do is, is be that gracious one. Yeah, they used to touch my hair. I had dreads going down, and I'd be places, and people would just grab up and touch my hair. And sometimes I wasn't full, and I got tired of it, and I let them know. But I didn't build any relationships out of those corrections. And in some cases, I wasn't trying to. But in those places where you're trying to build relationships, you're trying to build collaboration. It's important to give that grace to other people that they don't deserve because you didn't deserve it at some point too. My name is Andre Cohen. Thank you for joining us for this session and um, let's keep talking.